Fund Head Coach, Andy Farrell. Hi, Andy. How are things? Great, thanks. You? Not too bad now. Um, so I suppose just to get started, I might just get your, your immediate thoughts. 40-man squad, I imagine it was tough to nail it down in the end, I would say. And are you just pleased, I suppose, with, with the balance across the, the 40 you have? Oh, yeah. No, we're, we're delighted. We're, we're so excited about um, um, taking this squad as a group of 40 to... Um, you know, probably the hardest place in world rugby to go to and finding out about ourselves. You know, this is a historic tour that probably will never be done again, certainly with how we've um, structured the tour. Um, maybe Ireland will never get to play a, a, a three game uh, test series out there again. And, you know, this is the ultimate, isn't it? We're talking about building now towards a World Cup and um, he what you want to do in those type of circumstances is, is, is test yourself against the best and it doesn't get any better or tougher than uh, going to New Zealand and playing them in their own backyard, uh, backyard after, with uh, what we see as five test matches. And just finally for me then, have you spoken to any of the, the players who, who just missed the cut or, or will you be speaking to any of those players? And how hard was it, I suppose, then to just nail down those, those last few places? Yeah, no, there's plenty of conversations that have been happening over the last few days and uh, like always, it's tough, you know, because um, they all wanted to make the tour. Um, it was all, I'm 100% sure, within their goals of the season to to, um, to perform well enough to get on this tour because they can see what it means to Irish rugby and they want to be part of it, you know. We've we've picked out a 40-man uh, squad, which is the biggest squad that we've, that we've picked. Um, because of the the schedule, etc., and they know the, the the players that have missed out and the and, and the injured players and the guys who have been picked as well that this is the opportunity to show what they're about under of the most extreme pressure to see whether um, they can perform at the highest level and and see whether they earn the right to carry on into next year, which is which is uh, obviously the World Cup year. Thanks, Sandy. Thank you. Hi Andy, Ashling here from Off The Ball, how are you? Great, thanks you. Good, thank you. Just to speak about the, the players that didn't make the quote, the, the squad itself is really strong, but as you said, there's probably a lot of disappointment there as well for certain players. Could I ask if um, Munster's uh, Jack O'Donoghue, he was in contention? Of course, everyone's in contention, especially the guys who, who are playing well, and, and Jack's obviously one of them. Um, he um, obviously is in a very competitive competi uh, uh, position there, and uh, you know you look across who has been selected in those areas. I don't think you could complain about any of those that are selected either. And do you have such thing as like a standby list or players that are told to be ready if anything happens, that sort of thing? Uh, yes, we know uh, um, uh, all the players are with the uh, f um, falling out from the clubs. You know, some some clubs are wrapping up this week. Some clubs have already wrapped up, and some lads are heading on holiday. So we're 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 aware of where where people are. Brilliant, Andy. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, Andy. Justin Tracy. Andy, just tell us a little bit about what you're seeing with Kieran Frawley and how he's developed over particularly the last season at Leinster. Um. Kieran's like a, a number of players that's been selected in the squad. There's 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 massive potential there, you know, and we we want to see that potential flourish under under extreme pressure. And he's a type of player that we obviously want to this this tour is is is, is brilliant for because um, one we this is what touring's all about, isn't it? We we get to find out about uh, players um, how they live. Uh, uh, away from home, etc. How, how they're a good teammate um, um, within a squad of forty is, is pretty important, and and versatility. Whilst we're playing at the other end of the world, um, you know it's very hard to, to get people out there um, w w within within forty eight hours. So you got to have a versatility within in your group. And obviously, Kieran, he um, he can play um, a number of positions. He played fullback uh, last weekend when he came on and, and and looked pretty comfortable there. But we know. He can play very well at 10 and 12 as well. Hey, Andy, how's it going? Good, thanks. 
Um, listen, I, I, like I know it's only, I think it's just been out just around an hour now, but a lot of people, so the immediate reaction was so many people were looking forward to seeing Rob Balakoon in action and, and he picked up that unfortunate injury at the weekend. Uh, you know, maybe just a few words about him and, and do you know more about what injury he has and how bad it is? Yeah, he's a, he's, he's a few things going on in his hip though. That's muscular. It's not, it's not um, um, uh, structural damage, which is a good thing, but... Um, the, in, the the injury is said to be four to six weeks. So um, uh, we had uh, Robin yesterday, and uh, we was waiting on results of that, and we're gutted for him, uh, absolutely. Uh, we're gutted for ourselves as coaches as well because th th this is the type of tour that's made for for people like Rob, you know, to to show his to show his worth um, on on the, on, the, on the big stage, you know, and that's what the tour's all about, you know. This is. This is for us. It's the start of our World Cup campaign, and we wanted players like Rob involved in in that process. You know. And yeah, like you mentioned it there at the start, and it was in the kind of the release when the squad was announced. Yeah, do you kind of like? I suppose what's your own personal take on the fact that these type of tours might not be around anymore, especially if there's a more kind of global calendar? Like, is it a shame in a way that Ireland might not tour New Zealand and do these big tours anymore? Well, I'm yet to experience what, what, what's going to gonna come down the line, so I suppose I can only judge it on that. But um, I've grown up all my life on a three-test tour. Um, I, I, I absolutely love it. Um, I think three games, you know, you, you obviously, um, you know, you go one one nil down, you see the pressure. Um, uh, building for the second game, and you know, the, there's 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 not just the the performance of, of, of the three game uh, test series, but there's also the the ability to move around the country and uh, see different places, etc., and and get a feel for for what it's like abroad. And I suppose when you're bouncing around from from one country to the next, you, you, I think you'd just be in the bubble, and and all that all that tends to go out the window. Hence, why Alliance Tour is so special for for many people. And then, yeah, just the, the last one for me, if I can, I just, um, I suppose with Leinster and Ulster, and like, I suppose there's maybe a fear at the moment in Irish circles that we could be getting outgunned by bigger sides, like that big La Rochelle pack and the Bulls pack as well. Just what's your own take on that? And like, you know, could people be panicking a little bit about what this Irish pack is capable of, of and the Irish provinces as well? Well, you know, a lot gets said about Ireland, and you know, are they are they playing like Munster? Are they playing like Leinster? Are they playing like Ulster, etc.? We're Ireland. We're we're our own team. You know, we we play our own way, and uh, you know, we've 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 come up against big teams before and been unbelievably physical. You know, it's, physicality is not just about fronting up; it's about how you play the game and how you get opportunities to 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 create space to be be able to get over the game line and. You know, be able to um, uh, be aggressive in, in in the right parts of the game, and uh, I think we've done pretty well of late in, in that type of scenario. So, um, no, it, it doesn't affect us at all. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Andy. Enjoy Thank the you. trip. Cheers. Andy, maybe just one final one to give, I suppose, the viewing public a sense of where performance needs to be at. Uh, just basing it on the last Six Nations, where where do you see? are needing to be to come away with even one and possibly multiple wins uh, in this test series um well we've not been before that's that's it's fact to me um you know our, our last performance against them or any any good performance that you've seen over the last 18 months two years uh, we we need to be better than that it's different it's different over there and that's why touring for these lads is so important um, we've missed it um, you know we've we've lads on over 20 20 plus caps that's never toured um, you know so um, walking around Auckland or Wellington or Dunedin it's not like walking down Balls Bridge and um, people winding the window down and saying how good you are you know this 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 is completely different this is proper this is proper international rugby that, that doesn't get any better and it's exactly what we want at this moment in time. Okay guys, we'll finish up with uh, Moreno.
Hi, Andy. Good morning from Italy. It's Moreno. Uh, just one question. Uh, uh, how, in your opinion, the latest uh, results of the Irish provinces in the Anakin Cup uh, champions and in the URC will affect and if will affect the tour down under to New Zealand in a positive way? I mean, will to have revenge or maybe in a negative way going down with uh, a loss on your back? Thank you. Um, well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. But um, uh, what this this three day camp is is making sure that we get cohesive, that we start enjoying each other's company, we start building the relationships that we've built built, and, and we need to build them even stronger um, in in the next in, in the next four weeks. Um, you can look at it both ways, you know. Um, if Leinster and Ulster would have both played in the final, you can say that they've got good game time and you know the match fit, etc. Or you could say, well, listen, we've 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 got the players now. We've we've got a three-day camp. We're a little bit ahead of the curve, getting onto the plane, and we've got a fit squad. So uh, I suppose you can take it either way. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, folks, we're going to switch on now to the embargo written section.